communion at the same time. There is a receptacle to put your empty cup in as you leave. Also, we will be singing together today for the first time in a long time. The hymn we will sing today will be towards the end of worship after communion. Please make sure you're wearing your mask at that time if you choose to sing. In the year 70, the Roman army sacked the city of Jerusalem and destroyed the Jewish temple. This was a tremendous blow to the Jewish people. In addition to the great loss of life, they could no longer worship or offer sacrifices in the temple, which was a crucial part of their religion. This was the beginning of a major shift in Judaism, away from a focus on the temple and toward a focus on the writings of rabbis. The young Christian church, just 40 years old, was also centered in Jerusalem at the time. It was also deeply affected by this. At the time, stories about Jesus were being told by word of mouth, spread from church to church by the apostles and their followers. Someone decided that now, as everything changed in Jerusalem, was the time to put these stories together into one narrative. This unknown person composed a story that would be shared among the churches by leaders trained to memorize and tell it. This story became known as a gospel, which means good news. And over time, other gospels were created as well. Gospels were never intended to be biographies or historical documents. They were created to share a story of faith, not to share historical details, but rather to proclaim where God was among a community that struggled. Gospels were composed to nurture faith within those who heard them. Eventually, these stories were written down by scribes and translated into just about every language there was. The first of these became the Gospel according to Mark. This is that story. The beginning of the good news of Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God, part one. As it was written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you to prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John wore clothing of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. Ugh. He proclaimed, the one who is mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandal. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee to Judea and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he came up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Immediately, the spirit drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. When John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As he was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew, who were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. So they left their net and followed him. Going a little farther, he came upon James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. They came to Capernaum, 
And on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and began to teach. And they were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one with authority and not as the scribes. Well, just then there was in their, temp their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit who cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked the spirit, saying, Shut up and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying loudly, came out of him. And all those who saw it were amazed and said to one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. As soon as they left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they told him about her at once. So Jesus took her by the hand and lifted her up. And the fever left her and she began to serve them. Well, that evening at sunset, they brought to him all who were sick and all who were possessed with demons and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases and he cast out many demons. And he would not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. The next morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place. And there he prayed. Well, Simon and his companions hunted for him. And when they found him, they said, everyone's searching for you. Jesus said to them, let us go on to the neighboring towns. So I may proclaim the message there as well, for that is what I came out here to do. So he went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues and casting out demons. Well, a leper came, begging him, and kneeling down before him, he said, if you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched the leper and said, I do choose, be made clean. At once the leprosy left him and he was made clean. Well, after sternly warning him, Jesus sent him away saying, see that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest and make for your offering what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it everywhere to spread the news so that Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but remained out in the country, and people came to him from every quarter. When he returned to Capernaum after some days, it was reported that he was at home, and so many people gathered around that there was no longer room for them all, not even in front of the door. Well, then some people came, bringing a paralyzed man to him, carried by four of them. When they could not reach Jesus on account of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And after having dug through it, they let down the mat on which the paralytic lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. But there were some scribes there who questioned in their hearts, why is this man speaking in this way? This is blasphemy. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Well, Jesus was aware of their questions, so he said to them, why do you raise such questions in your heart? Which is easier, to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, stand up, take up your mat and walk, but so that you may know that the Son of Humanity has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I say to you, stand up, take up your mat, and go to your home. And he stood up and immediately took up his mat and walked out before all of them. And they were all amazed and said to one another, we've never seen anything like this. 
Again, Jesus went out beside the sea, and the crowd followed him, and he taught them. As he went along the, the sea, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth. He said to him, follow me, and he got up and followed him. As he was sitting at dinner at Levi's house, there were many tax collectors and sinners who were also eating with Jesus and his disciples because there were many who followed him. Well, when the Pharisees saw that he was eating with tax collectors and sinners, they said to his disciples, why is he eating with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard it, he said to the Pharisees, one who is well does not need a physician but one who is sick. I've come to call not the righteous, but sinners. Now the disciples of the Pharisees and the disciples of John the Baptizer were fasting. So people asked Jesus, why do John's disciples and the Pharisees' disciples fast, but your disciples do not fast? Jesus said to them, well, the wedding guests can't fast while they have the bridegroom with them, can they? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. The day is coming when the bridegroom will be taken away from them. They will fast on that day. And he said to them, no one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth onto an old cloak. Otherwise, the patch will tear away the new from the old, and a worse tear will be made. Likewise, no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the skins will burst and the wine will be lost, and so will the skins. But one puts new wine into fresh wine skins. One Sabbath, he was walking through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. Well, when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Jesus said to them, have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? Well, they entered the holy temple in the days of high priest Abiathar and took the bread of the presence, which is not lawful for any but the high priest to eat. And David ate some and shared it with his companions. And Jesus said to them, the Sabbath was made for humanity, not humanity for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Humanity is Lord even of the Sabbath. Then he entered the synagogue, and there was a man there who had a withered hand. Well, the Pharisees watched him to see whether he would heal him on the Sabbath in order to accuse him. Well, Jesus said to the man, come forward. And he said to them, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. Jesus looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart, and he said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. At once the Pharisees went out and began to conspire with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. Again, Jesus departed with his disciples beside the sea. And a huge crowd from Galilee followed him. As a matter of fact, because of all he'd been saying and doing, they came to him in great numbers from Judea and from Jerusalem, from Idumea and beyond the Jordan. They came from Tyre and Sidon. Jesus commanded his disciples to have a boat ready for him on account of the crowd, so they would not crush him. For he had cured many, so that everyone who was sick pressed in on him in order to touch him. And whenever the unclean spirits saw him, they cried out, you are the son of God. But Jesus sternly ordered them not to make him known. Then he went up on the mountain, and he called to him those whom he wanted, and they came. And he appointed twelve, whom he also called apostles, to be with him, to be sent out to spread the word, and to have authority to cast out demons. So he appointed the twelve, 
Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter, James and John, to whom he gave the name Boanerges, that is, sons of thunder, and Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew, and Thomas and Matthew and James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Cananean and Thaddeus, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Then he went to his home, and the crowd followed, so they could not even eat. Well, when his family heard that he was home, they went out to restrain him, because people were saying, he's gone out of his mind. But the scribes who had come up from Jerusalem were saying, he has Beelzebul, and by the ruler of the demons, he casts out demons. So Jesus called the scribes to himself and spoke to them in a riddle, saying, How can Satan cast out Satan? I mean, if a, if, if a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if Satan has risen up against Satan and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But I tell you, no one can enter the house of a strong man and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then, indeed, his property can be plundered. People will be forgiven for their sins and whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. Well, then his mother and brothers and sisters came. And standing outside, they sent word to him and called him. Now, there was a crowd sitting around Jesus, and they said to him, uh, Your mother and brother and sisters are outside asking for you. Jesus replied, Who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at the crowd, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. Again, Jesus began to teach beside the sea. And such a huge crowd gathered around that he got into that boat on the sea, while the crowd was all on the land by the sea. And he began to teach them many things in riddles. And in his teaching, he said, listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell on the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some seed fell into rocky ground where it did not have much soil. And it sprang up quickly because it had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, it was scorched. And because it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns. And the thorns grew up and choked it so that it yielded nothing. But other seed fell into good soil. And grew and increased and yielded 30, 60, 100 fold. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. When he had left the crowd and gone into the house, his disciples asked them about the riddle. And he said to them, Well, to you is given the secret of the kingdom of God, but to those outside, everything comes in riddles. So they may indeed see, but not perceive. They may indeed listen, but not understand. So they may not turn again and be forgiven. Then he said to them, Did you not understand this riddle? Well, how then will you understand any of the riddles? The sower sows the word. These are the ones on the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear the word, Satan comes and snatches away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground. When they hear the word, they immediately receive it with joy. But they have no root and endure only a while. So when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, they immediately fall away. Others are those sown among thorns. Well, these hear the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth and the desire for other things come and choke the word so that it yields nothing. But others are those sown in good soil. They hear the word and receive it and accept it and indeed bear fruit, 30, 60, and a hundredfold. And he said to them, Is a lamp brought in just to be put under the bushel basket or under the bed? 
and not put on the lampstand? So there is nothing hidden except to be revealed. There's nothing secret except to come to light. Let anyone with ears to hear listen. And he said to them, pay attention to what you hear. For the measure you give will be the measure you get, and more will be given to you. For to those who have, more will be given, and from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. He also said to them, the kingdom of God is like someone who would scatter seed on the ground, and then he would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He doesn't know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But as soon as the grain is ready, at once he comes in with his sickle, for the harvest has come. And he also said this to them, with what shall we compare the kingdom of God? What, what riddle shall we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown on the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. But when it is sown, it grows and increases and becomes the greatest of shrubs, putting forth large branches so the birds can make nests in its shade. With many such riddles, he spoke the word to them as they could hear it. He did not speak to them except in riddles, but explained everything in private to his disciples. That same day when it was evening, Jesus said to the disciples, let us go across to the other side. So leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was, and other boats were with him. Well, then a great windstorm arose, and the waves were beating on the boat so that the boat was already being swamped, but Jesus was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. So the disciples went and woke him up and said, Teacher, don't you care that we're dying out here? Jesus arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace, be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a dead calm. Jesus said to the disciples, why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, who is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Well, they reached the other side, the country of the Gerasenes. And as soon as Jesus got out of the boat, a man from out of the tombs with an unclean spirit came and met him. Now this man lived among the tombs, and no one was able to restrain him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been restrained with chains and shackles, but the chains he wrenched apart and the shackles he broke into pieces. Day and night, among the tombs and in the hills, he was always howling and bruising himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran to him, fell down at his feet, and cried at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? Swear to me by God you will not torment me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? And he replied, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he earnestly begged Jesus not to send them out of the country. Well, there on the hillside, there was a great herd of pigs feeding. So the unclean spirits begged Jesus, Send us into the pigs, let us enter them. So Jesus gave them permission. So the spirits came out of the man and entered the pigs. And the whole herd, which numbered about 2,000, rushed headlong down the steep slope into the sea and were drowned in the sea. The pig herders ran off, and they told in the city and in the country all that had happened. So people came to see what it was that had taken place. When they came to Jesus, 
They saw the demoniac sitting next to him, clothed and in his right mind, the very man who had had the legion. And they were afraid. Well, then those who had seen what had happened reported it, and they started to beg Jesus to leave their neighborhood. So as Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed by demons begged him that he might go with him. But Jesus refused, saying, Go home and tell your friends all that the Lord has done for you, what mercy he has shown you. So he went out among all the ten cities and proclaimed all that Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. When Jesus had gone again to the other side, there was a great crowd waiting for him on the shore, and Jesus was with them. Then one of the leaders of the synagogue named Jairus came. And when he saw Jesus, he ran to him, knelt down at his feet, and begged him repeatedly, My little daughter is at the point of death. Come, lay your hands on her so she may be made well and live. So Jesus went with him. And a large crowd followed him and pressed in on him. Now there was a woman who had suffered from hemorrhages for 12 years. She had endured much under many physicians and had spent all she had. She was no better, but actually grew worse. Well, she heard about Jesus and came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak. For she said, if I but touch his clothing, I will be made well. Immediately, her hemorrhages stopped, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her disease. Well, immediately aware that power had gone forth from him, Jesus turned about in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothing? Well, the disciples said to him, You see the crowd pressing in on you. How can you say, Who touched me? But Jesus continued to look around to see who it was. Well, then the woman, knowing what had happened, came to him in fear and trembling, fell down at his feet, and told him the whole truth. Then Jesus said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go and remain healed of your disease. As he was still speaking, some people came from the leader's house to say, Your daughter is dead. Why trouble the teacher any further? But Jesus overheard their words and said to the leader of the synagogue, Don't be afraid, only believe. And he permitted no one to go with him except for Peter, James, and John. And when they came to the house of the leader of the synagogue, Jesus saw a great commotion, people weeping and wailing loudly. And as he went in the house, he said to them, Why are you weeping and causing a commotion? The child is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. So Jesus put them all outside and went in with the child's father and mother and those who were with him. He went to where the child was, took her by the hand and said, Talitha kum, which means little girl get up. And she got up and began to walk about. She was 12 years of age. At this they were overcome with amazement. And he strictly ordered that no one should know about this, and he told them to give her something to eat. Then Jesus left that place and went to his hometown. On the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and began to teach, and many who were there were astounded at his teaching. They said, where did this man get all this? What great wisdom is in his mind? What great deeds of power are being done by his hands? Isn't this the carpenter? The son of Mary and the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And aren't his sisters here among us? And they took offense at him. Well, Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his own hometown and among his own kin and in his own house. And he could do no deed of power there, except that he did lay his hands on a few sick people and cure them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Well, then he went about among the villages teaching. 
He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, and to wear sandals and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, remain in that place until you leave. And if any place will not welcome you, and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So the disciples set out and proclaimed that all should repent. And they cast out many demons. And they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. Well, King Herod heard about it. King Herod heard about it because Jesus' name had become known. And many people were saying, Ah, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. For this reason, these great powers are at work in him. But others were saying, No, it's Elijah. And others were saying, No, it's one of the prophets, you know, one of the prophets of old. But Herod, when he heard it, said, John, whom I beheaded, has been raised. For Herod himself had sent men out who arrested John, bound him, and threw him in prison on account of Herod's brother Philip's wife, Herodias. For Herod himself had married her. For John had been saying, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. So Herodias had a grudge against John and wanted to kill him. But she couldn't because Herod feared John, knowing he was a holy and righteous man, and protected him. Oh, whenever he heard John speak, he was greatly perplexed, but he liked to listen to him. But an opportunity came when Herod gave a banquet for his courtiers, his, his leaders, and all the leaders of Galilee. When Herodias' daughter came in and danced, she greatly pleased Herod and the guests. So the king said to her, Ask me for whatever you want, and I will give it to you. And he solemnly swore, whatever you ask for, I will give you, even half my kingdom. So the girl went out and said to her mother, what should I ask for? Her mother said, the head of John the baptizer. So the girl ran back and said to the king, I want you to give me at once the head of John the baptizer on a platter. Well, the king was greatly distressed. But out of regard for his oaths and for the guests, he didn't want to refuse her. So he sent a soldier of the guard with orders to bring John's head. He went into the prison and beheaded him there, brought the head on a platter and gave it to the girl, and she gave it to her mother. When John's disciples heard about it, they came and took the body away and laid it in a tomb. Well. The, dis the apostles returned and gathered around Jesus and told him all they had done and taught. Jesus said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. So they got into the boat and went away to a deserted place by themselves. However, many people saw them and recognized them and hurried there on foot from all the towns and got there first. So when Jesus got out of the boat, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples said to him, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send these people away so they can go into the villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But Jesus said to them, You give them something to eat. The disciples said, Well, are we to buy 200 denarii worth of bread and just give it to them to eat? Jesus said, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. Well, when they found out, they told him, Five and two fish. Well, Jesus told the disciples to have the people sit down in groups on the green grass. 
So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Then Jesus took the five loaves, gave thanks and broke them, and gave them to his disciples, and they gave them to the crowds. And he did the same with the fish. And all ate, and all were filled. Then Jesus told the disciples to collect all the leftover pieces, and they filled 12 baskets full of the leftover pieces. And those who had eaten numbered 5,000 men. Then Jesus immediately told the disciples to get back into the boat and go on ahead to, to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he dismissed the crowds. After he had said farewell, he went up on the mountain to pray. So when it was evening, the disciples were out at sea, and Jesus was alone on the land. When he saw them straining at the oars on account of an adverse wind, Jesus began to go towards them, walking on the sea. He intended to pass them by, but they saw him, and they were afraid, and they thought he was a ghost, and they all cried out. At once Jesus said, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. He stepped onto the boat, and the wind stopped. And they were all amazed because they didn't understand about the loaves, but their hearts were hardened. When they came to the other side, they reached land at Gennesaret, and they moored the boat there. And as soon as Jesus got out of the boat, people recognized him, and they started to bring all the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever Jesus went, in farms or towns or cities, they put the sick in the marketplace and begged him that they might touch just the fringe of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. Now, when the Pharisees and scribes who had come up from Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees don't eat anything unless they first wash their hands thoroughly up to the elbow, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they eat nothing from the market without washing it first. And there are many other traditions they follow, the washing of cups and pots and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and scribes said to Jesus, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands. Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold on to human traditions. And he said to them, you know, you have a fine way of rejecting God's command to hold on to your traditions. Moses said, honor your father and mother, and whoever speaks evil of father or mother must surely die. But you say, well, if anyone says to a father or a mother, whatever support you might have had from me is an offering to God, well, then you no longer allow for anyone to support a father or mother thus making void the word of God through your tradition that you have handed down. And you do many such things. Then he called the crowd together and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going in can defile. But it is, from, it is what comes out of a person that defiles. When he had gone into the house, his disciples asked him about the riddle. And he said to them, Do you also fail to see that nothing outside a person can defile? For it enters not the heart, but the stomach, and then, well, then goes out into the sewer. Thus Jesus declared all foods to be clean. But it's what comes out of a person that defiles. For it's from within, from the human heart, that come all evil intentions. Fornication, theft, murder, 
idolatry, adultery, licentiousness, greed, pride, slander, folly, all these things come from within, and they defile a person. Then Jesus left that place and went to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and didn't want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose daughter had an unclean spirit heard about him and came and knelt down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by origin, and she begged Jesus to cast the demon out of her daughter. But Jesus said to her, let the children be fed first. It's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But the woman said to him, Sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Well, then Jesus said to her, For saying this, you may go. Your daughter has been healed. So she went home and found her daughter lying on the bed, the demon gone. Then Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon towards the Sea of Galilee in the area of the Ten Cities. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and begged him that he might lay his hands on him and cure him. So Jesus took the, the deaf man away from the crowd. He put his fingers in his ears, he spat and touched his tongue. And he looked up to heaven and said, Ephatha, which means be opened. And the man's ears were opened, and his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. Well, Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone about this, but the more he commanded them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were saying, he has done all things well. He makes even the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. Then he went across with the disciples to the other side, to the region. Now, oh, I was doing so well. Here's what happened next. In those days, there was again a great crowd with nothing to eat. And Jesus said to his disciples, I have compassion for this crowd because they've been with me for three days and they have nothing to eat. And if I send them home hungry, well, they'll faint on the way, and some of them have come a great distance. Well, the disciples said to him, How can anyone feed this many people out here in the desert? Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? And they said, Well, seven. So Jesus commanded the people to sit down. And he took the seven loaves, and he broke them, and he gave them to the disciples to distribute to the crowds. Now it turns out the disciples also had a few small fish and he commanded that these two be distributed. And all ate and all were filled. And those who had eaten numbered 4,000 and they collected seven baskets full of the broken pieces. Then Jesus dismissed the crowd and then they went ahead to the other side the district of Dalmanutha. Well, some Pharisees came and began to argue with Jesus. And to test him, they asked him for a sign from heaven. Well, Jesus sighed deeply in his spirit. And he said to them, why does this generation ask for a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation. And he got back in the boat and went on ahead to the other side again. Now. The disciples had forgotten to bring bread along, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. So Jesus began to caution them, saying, Beware the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. And the disciples said to one another, Yeah, he's talking about yeast because we forgot to bring bread. When Jesus heard that, he said to them, Why are you talking about not having any bread? Do you still not understand? Do you have eyes but cannot see? Do you have ears but cannot hear? And do you not remember? Look, when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, 
how many baskets of leftovers did you collect? They said, 12. And when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many baskets of leftovers did you collect? They said, seven. Do you still not understand? Then they came to Bethsaida. And at Bethsaida, they brought to him a blind man and begged him to heal him. Well, Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the city. And after putting saliva on his eyes and laying his hands on him, Jesus said to the man, can you see anything? And the man said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Jesus laid his hands on the man again, and he looked intently, and his vision was restored, and he could see everything clearly. And Jesus sent him to his home and said to him, don't even go into the village. End of part one. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Since the PowerPoint isn't working at this time, the response to these are hear our prayer. For the well-being of all creation, Lord, in your mercy. For those who are hurting and suffering, including Joe, Bob, Nora, Rhonda, Kathy, Pam, Lois, Elwood, family and friends of Barb, Eugene, and William. Lord, in your mercy. For faithfulness in the church, including the Congregation of Holy Trinity, Digman's Ferry, and their pastor, Niels Nielsen, Lord, in your mercy. For celebrations and times of great joy, especially for those with birthdays this week, including Derek Brands, Louise Brown, Martin Yazdick, Neil Bilger, and Brandon Gillow, Lord, in your mercy. For those who translate and proclaim scripture, Lord, in your mercy. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand. That's right, that's not up on the screen, is it? It says please stand, no. All right. But you know your responses to this. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and prayers. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for creating us to live together in unity and for forgiving our failures and following your call. Blessed are you, Abba, Father, for sending your beloved Son and for adopting us to be your family of sisters and brothers. Lord, we receive this good news. Blessed are you, Sovereign of mercy, for establishing your kingdom in Jesus the Messiah. He healed the sick and welcomed men and women, and taught the commandments. Blessed is he, the Son of Man, who became a servant of all, who overcomes the might of Satan until the end of time. Lord, we believe this good news. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. 
We remember the good news of his life given for us, his death on the cross and his rising from the tomb. By the power of your spirit, hidden in the ministry of Jesus, reveal yourself to us here, hidden in this bread and cup. Do not forsake us, but save us in the time of trial. By this mystery of Christ's body and blood, cast out our demons, cleanse our hearts, and strengthen our service toward all in need. Lord, do not ever forsake us. To you, Lord God, the Blessed One, and to your Son coming at the end in glory, and to the Holy Spirit descending on us now like a dove, be all our praise and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All who hunger and thirst come, the table is ready. Please be seated. You can get your communion cups ready. I invite you to open the bread side of your communion cup and place that in your hand. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. You may open the wine side of your cup. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. Please just hold on to these cups until the end. There is a receptacle on your way out. Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right, since you don't have the words on the screen and we don't have hymnals back in the pews yet, I think what we're going to have to do is I'm going to have to call out the, uh, oh, yeah. I'll be darned. Dun, dun, dun. Here come the hymnals, I guess. It's 511. All right, well, this is going to be hymn number 300, or no, 511. 511. We're going to sing the first three stanzas in In five one one, five one one. Okay, five one one versus one through three.
God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. The living word dwells in you. Thanks be to God.